Hello, thank you. My name is Martin Mazzora. I am living and working in Brooklyn, New York. I am originally from Morgantown, West Virginia, where I did my undergraduate studies at West Virginia University. Um, and I also studied at the American University in Washington, DC. There's no denying that I am a Cuban American. This is my experience. Whether I have, I speak Spanish, whether I, you know, was, you know, from Kendall or West Virginia, man, you know, that's like, that's my experience as a Cuban American. And it's part of many different experiences that people have. There's definitely moments where you, you feel yourself being able to tap into that and being able to communicate specifically to that experience. I couldn't put a finger on it because I feel like it's kind of across the board that this is the kind of thing that I'm, that I'm working from, you know, like always working from. In my current work that I've included in this exhibition, I think that the pieces that I am the most proud of that I've recently completed was a piece called Crazy Arms, which is two inflatable air dancers that are about 18 to 20 feet tall that are sort of a self-portrait. They're covered in um, imagery of the tattoos that I have on my arms and they uh, stand in the gallery waving and flailing about kind of in an animated uh, way that you would gesture when talking if you were a active storyteller. I think that the uh, American style tattoos that I have and the gesturing of these things is also part of like a ubiquitous kind of Americana and I think that that kind of speaks to a tale, you know, that I have to tell, as, a, as well as like the accumulation of all those tattoos that have personal significant meaning, but don't necessarily need to be my story. I think that they could speak to that kind of accumulation of history. Printmaking and the idea of making multiples really comes from, you know, a accessibility, making the, you know, the work accessible to a larger group of people has been paramount throughout the 20 plus years that I've been making work. I think that being able to have the work and make it in such a way, uh, consciously make it in such a way that it, it can be affordable to other people, but still have a, a sense of value I very much engage in a commercial aspect of making work as an artist. I, I really do believe in that. But then I also use it to make some things that are not necessarily commercially viable, like these big inflatable arms or, you know, giant collages and, and things like that are made basically just in the spirit of um, the experience of making work but through a process. And I've made work for performance that is just gonna exist in that moment. I think that I had to start making bigger prints because my eyesight started getting really bad. And ultimately, no, just kidding. But seriously, like the, to make things function in that really intimate scale is, is one that is really traditionally associated with printmaking. It, you know, from book arts, in that experience of, of the page to making work that could be experienced by a lot of different people. But when you make something that's like four by eight feet, that's meant to be experienced with a group of people. So you're speaking to a larger audience at that point. You're, you know, you're opening that up to people experiencing that work together. It takes a lot of energy to make work on that scale. It takes a lot of space, you know, to make work on that scale. Uh, making it in three dimensions it just you know it's one of those things too where it's just like you kind of what if you know what if it wrapped around a cardboard box what if you know it was on fabric and could be stretched and and taken around 
I came to Letterpress in probably the early 2000s as a means to get uh, to try and make my work better. So that, <laughs> you know, it was there as an opportunity to, to, to use it. And I found that there were aspects that I couldn't express with through imagery that I could do more directly and uh, clearly with, uh, with letterpress type. One of the pieces that I included in this exhibition is the Ham and Acid Hideout, which is a purely typographically driven piece. There are some uh, illustrative elements that are in these things, but this, you know, piece that's in the show is about 11 by 11 feet. Um, it's made up of a, a wood titling uh, panel or what I've been referring to as the balance with the name uh, Ham and Acid Hideout. And it has an angry clam that's been uh, two dimensionally cut out and stacked wood. So it's like a slight slow relief character that's placed above it. Uh, it's made up of two uh, letterpress printed fabric banners that function like curtains and they meet in the center of the piece. And the idea is that it alludes to the idea of something behind all of this text. And if you read the text, you could pretty much find my uh, secret studio location in Clinton, Connecticut. It, but the, the secret location, you know, it has all of these different things that I would see driving by on the way from Brooklyn to this studio that I've been keeping in Connecticut. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a portrait, you know, through typography. So it was like the most direct way that I could get to it. I was really honored to be asked to participate in this exhibition and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh, exhibition gets pulled off.